Hi everybody, Father Bill Holsinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. I was reading an article just the other day, and the article was dated, let's see here, I'm looking at my computer behind the camera, August 19, 2023, from the New York Times by Melissa Kirch. And in that article, she was reflecting on how it is when we come back from vacations. I've mentioned vacations, take God on vacation, please, you know, bring your faith and don't go on a vacation from your faith. But also now when we do come back, because now what school is about to start, we're ending the summer season, you might say, anyway, academically, you might say. And for her, she was speaking about how when she comes home, she starts looking around things and they seem strange. Uh, she's living out of a, a suit bag or a suitcase uh, bag or simple things and why do I need, and she comes home, all these sweatshirts, all these coats when all I needed was a few of them. And she finds that something which she'll call clarity, the post-vacation post clarity. And I think there's some value to this because we do go out and the whole idea of the vacation is to kind of get to a different space and enjoy different things that we haven't seen and to grow and to be recreated, you know, recreate. Well, Coming home, don't you look at your home a little differently when you come home from a vacation? What is it like? What's that feeling like when you've been gone for so many days or even weeks, possibly even a month or so, and you come home? I know for me, uh, the house is a little bit stuffy because it's been closed up. Uh, things are just kind of standstill from when I last left, so no activity happened. That's kind of a strange feeling, but of course there's nobody in the house. Um, but also there is other things like I don't really need all of these things that are in my house. That is, I don't need, as she stated, uh, all these knick-knacky things around. And these are great opportunities, I think, for you and for me to think about maybe getting rid of a few things. Kind of not a spring cleaning, but a, a fall cleaning. Seeing things differently. And she also noted this, which is interesting, that while we're on vacation, tell me if this is not true, while we're on vacation, we are very willing to do things that we may not, might not normally do. We're willing to take a little bit of risk or try some of the foods or do an adventure of some kind that we would have never thought of at home. In fact, when we're at home, we rarely do adventure out and we complain about things more and uh, on and on and on. I'm like, huh, this is a good insight, right? This is amazing. I think similar to what, as we as Catholic Christians, are supposed to be doing religiously, not like in a regular kind of religious sleep, but I mean, in our faith, we should be going and doing things that will help us see things more deeply in our faith. Maybe, have you been in a rut before? Have you ever been in a situation when you're praying and it just doesn't, it just doesn't have the fruit that it normally used to? Well, maybe you need to get out of your box and do something different. What might that be? What could you do that would be different? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, I'd like to offer a retreat. I think a retreat, everybody should go on every year, no matter what. Schedule one. I go on one every year with a priest at Mount Angel, and sometimes I'll even do an additional one, a silent retreat, imagine that, at the Trappist Abbey. I'm an extrovert, and so that might seem really tough, but I just love this silent retreat, and I need to go on one sometime soon. It just changes things. I'll take a book with me. I it will have little interaction. In fact, when having dinner with folks during a silent retreat, we don't have conversation, but we do have to communicate somehow, like pass the butter or something like that. It's strange at first, but you get used to it. Nonetheless, think about this. What kind of retreat can you go on? I know that at St. Pius X, they have Acts retreats. We've done chirp retreats for, as Christ Renewing His Parish, for our women. But maybe you might look online, look on our bulletin, uh, ask friends if they've been on a retreat and maybe go on one and maybe go together. Maybe as husband and wife, you go on like maybe a, a marriage encounter. That's a retreat, right? Many of you have done this. If you haven't, I really encourage it. So what do all these things do if we do them as, as Catholic Christians? Well, they they get us out of our, our rut of how we see things. And we're willing to try new things, experiment with maybe a new form of prayer, maybe uh, silent where we're used to being, you know, talkative or vice versa. Um, you think about that. Maybe head down to the Bay Area. The uh, There's a retreat center that does 
Jesuit spirituality retreats, and they're almost a month long. That's right, an Ignatian spiritual exercises retreat. Try that, yeah? Well, nonetheless, if none of those are possible, we do have a retreat, you might say, every weekend. And that is on Saturday night or Sunday. It's Mass. It, our house is not like the church. You don't have that many pews in your house. You don't have those kind of pews at all. You have chairs, right? As do I. But we're called then, when we come to Mass, to recognize we're in a different space. This is holy ground, as I mentioned earlier uh, in a previous uh, video. Coming to church allows us to bring forward those things that are difficult, let go of them. And then you basically think about, put them at the foot of the altar spiritually. When we receive communion, make an exchange. Lord, you take my stuff, my junk, and I receive you and renew me. So that when we leave and we go out, we're better, we're different, we're more faithful and stronger. No, I'm not, I'm not under any illusion that often in the families when they come to church, the big fight was happening on the way there in that car. And, and when we get to church, we're all trying to be nice. But what would happen if, because of Mass, we were given the grace to be different on our way home? And this is for young and old, for children, teens, young adults, and adults. What's wrong in your life that needs to be put straight? Bring it to Mass. Let God take it and let go. Surrender and let him have it. Deacon Brett was uh, last week talking about how, being, how we should be bold in our prayers with the Lord. This is a great thing to be bold about. The things that we struggle with or we have unforgiveness about, or maybe we were wrong and we need to ask for forgiveness. Think about that. This weekend, I'll be preaching. I'm kind of working on the phrase about how Jesus was asked, or he asked his apostles, uh, who do people say that I am? And they had all kinds of ideas. The question is going to be for us as well. Who do we say Jesus is? Who does the culture say Jesus is? Hopefully those are different because the culture doesn't recognize him. But we do. And that's one of our missions. That's part of our mission to know. To know Jesus. Not just know about him, but know him personally. But it's also important to know about him because if we know about him in a way that's not really how Jesus revealed himself, then we're not actually worshiping and loving Jesus because that's not who he is. So I want to share some of those kind of things at Mass. Hopefully that will then give us some better grounding so that we can, as we go forward, uh, let go and come to know Jesus. Get out of the way. Come to know about him, know him, and then grow and the end of Mass, go. I'll see you this weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.